China has been accused of unleashing agro-terrorism in the US. The FBI has arrested two Chinese nationals for allegedly smuggling a hazardous biological pathogen into the country to conduct research. The two Chinese nationals have been accused of smuggling in a fungus that infects crops like wheat, barley, oats and corn, causing head blight. It is also extremely harmful to humans with the capability of causing liver damage. U.S. authorities have stated that the fungus is a potential agro-terrorism weapon, according to scientific studies, and is capable of causing billions of dollars in losses. So are farm fields the new battlefields? And how dangerous is this quieter yet devastating form of terrorism known as agro-terrorism? But first, what exactly is agro-terrorism? In simple terms, weaponizing farm fields by using biological agents to destroy crops is broadly termed as agro-terrorism. It has far-reaching implications, especially for countries whose economy is dependent on agriculture. The ripple effect? Massive food wastage, increased processing costs, trade restrictions and long-term damage to agricultural markets. However, interestingly, this form of terrorism isn't new or unique. Germany was one of the first countries to resort to this weapon during World War I, when they allegedly used glanders and anthrax to infect horses. They allegedly used fungi to contaminate food grain stores intended for supplies to Allied forces in Europe. During World War II, Germany again targeted potato crops in Britain with potato beetles. The beetles were allegedly released from an aircraft. According to a research paper, Japan had also explored the option of agro-terrorism, intending to attack wheat fields in the US and Soviet Union with grain rust spores if the war continued. The U.S. had also stockpiled over 30 tons of a fungus responsible for wheat stem rust. It has also been claimed that the U.S. initially planned to destroy the rice crop in Japan, but later decided to use the atomic bomb to force the Asian nation to surrender. There's also the infamous instance of 1984, when a religious cult in America's Oregon contaminated salad bars to influence local elections. This instance resulted in 750 people getting sick. So is India vulnerable to Pakistani agro-terrorism? In India, the agriculture sector contributes around 17% to the country's GDP. As per the 2011 census, around 55% of the population is engaged in agriculture and allied activities. Moreover, with key agricultural states like Punjab, Rajasthan, Himachal Pradesh, sharing their borders with hostile neighbours like Pakistan and China, the threat of agro-terrorism is even more real. India has been a victim too. According to a research paper published by the DRDO in 2016, a toxic fungus reported in Bangladesh was found in two districts of West Bengal. However, the government contained the spread by banning wheat cultivation in the two districts for three years. Moreover, cultivation within five kilometers of the international border in other districts adjoining Bangladesh was prohibited. With tensions between India and Pakistan at an all-time high, the danger of toxic pathogens being smuggled into our country is looming large and being vigilant is the need of the hour. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.